The United Nations Security Council has condemned human rights violations by government troops and mercenary groups in the Sahel region. The comments came as part of a meeting focused on peace and security in Africa. Martha uh, Pobi, the Assistant Secretary General for Africa, called on the countries of the Sahel to come together uh, to achieve security objectives. She said the terror threat in the region poses a mortal threat to international peace and security. Now more than ever, countries in the region need to step up efforts to uphold and protect human rights. Uprooting terrorist groups who are often deeply enmeshed or embedded within communities is uniquely challenging in the Sahel and has rendered counter-terrorism operations immensely difficult to carry out. But if civilians fall victim to such operations, those very efforts are going to be pointless. Well, bringing a rise international correspondent, uh, Faith Orr, who is at the United Nations. Uh, Faith, glad to have you join us on Newsnight. One of the main issues we heard about in that meeting was human rights abuses in the Sahel region. Tell us about the Security Council's concerns. So most of the Security Council members actually raise concerns about human rights abuses throughout the Sahel region and many of them laid the blame for abuses in Mali at the door of the Wagner Group. Now for those who aren't familiar, that is a group of Russian mercenaries. They have been deployed across Africa in recent years. But in this particular instance, they are accused of teaming up with the Malian military to carry out a civilian massacre in March. And they're also being accused of looting natural resources, of exploiting long-standing rifts and targeting vulnerable communities. The UN Security Council says that their presence in Mali really does present a grave risk, grave danger for the civilian population. And the US has said that they are a problem, that they've you know, been a problem for many, many years, and that they undermine the rule of law across the continent, and that they threaten UN peacekeepers across the continent. Now, Russia has responded to these claims, and they've said, you know, once again, we're seeing claims from the West of these mercenaries, but in actual fact, as far as Russia is concerned, it's the West that's caused problems in Africa. They've caused problems throughout the years since colonialism by looting natural resources, by supporting coups, by supporting apartheid. Russia says that in fact it's actually supporting Mali, Chad and Niger by training their militaries and they're also training Malian police. Mm, Faith, uh, of course, Mali uh, announced on Sunday that it was withdrawing from the G5 uh, Sahel. What impact will this have, especially on the war against uh, jihadists within the region? So yes, Mali was actually supposed to take over the presidency of the G5 Sahel back in February. Now that didn't happen, they were blocked from taking that over and that is presenting a real problem for the region. That combined with France withdrawing its forces and Mali now, as you said on Sunday, withdrawing altogether from the G5 is really raising fears of more insecurity there. And the situation is worse across the entire region. You know, we, we heard in that meeting today that entire communities are being devastated, disintegrated because of armed groups. But Russia, again, is blaming the West for this instability, particularly France. They say that France put so much pressure on the G5 that it was forced to exclude Mali, that it was it forced them out of the group, in fact. And they say that, you know, sanctions that has been applied to countries like Mali, like Burkina Faso, is making the situation worse and it's making the challenge of insecurity much worse and actually reducing these countries' abilities to cope with fighting these armed groups. What are the Security Council members proposing and uh, how do things improve, so to say? 
So we heard from the Assistant Secretary General for Africa and what she really wants is for all of the countries in the region to work together. She says this is absolutely crucial. But despite that, there is a lack of consensus. You know, despite the threat of the armed groups, despite all of the food insecurity, there is still a lack of consensus in the region on how to proceed. And a lot of the security members really did push the notion of African solutions for African problems, that they don't want to kind of wade in and impose their own solutions. They want the G5 to do this themselves with support from the Security Council. Now, there is a joint force. The G5 already has a joint force. It costs about £26 billion to run. And since the end of 2019, it has carried out 26 operations. And, you know, that. so that is something that is this happening it has also been accused of abuses you know it's not perfect but France is saying that despite its withdrawal from Mali it's still offering its support to other nations to for training for counter-terror operations and the UK is providing funding to help three million people in the region we also know that ECOWAS, the African Union and the G5 are going to work together on a regional initiative that includes sustainable development and that will be overseen by Niger's former president, Mamadou Issoufou. All right, Faith Or, oh, thank you so much for bringing us up to speed uh, on this development.